Hello guys, today we're going to be working on this French door GE refrigerator. The complaint that we have is that it's not cooling properly and the model number is on the display. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings and during this video you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. So today we're going to be checking why this refrigerator is not cooling properly. We're going to go ahead and start by removing the drawers. Once you get to that part, we're going to go ahead and remove this little cap that is covering the harness for the fan motor because um, you have to press this little tap right there to be able to release this or just try to pull it out just to mention that. So we um, have kind of um, experience with this fan motor not working properly. And when I opened the refrigerator, I didn't feel any air blowing out. We removed those two one quarter screws to be able to remove this drawer. I find better to remove the top panel to be able to get this um, drawer out. And now we're gonna go ahead and release this harness to be able to remove completely this part of the top panel. Then we remove the rest of it. And now we have a better access to remove completely the bottom drawer. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the one quarter screws from this bracket. And as you see in this model, it only brings one, one quarter screws. And then the other side, it has a um, male to female connection sometimes the eyes uh, get this stuck so you have to let the refrigerator thaw out and that's the way how i release it from that um, male to female uh, bracket right there and as you see that's how it releases sometimes the ice is not going to let you do it that easy so you have to let the refrigerator thaw out now we're going to go ahead and remove the one quarter screws that holds this evaporator panel and as you can see there's still ice there so sometimes the ice is not gonna let you remove this panel either so you have to disconnect the refrigerator for a couple hours or use like a steamer or hot water to melt that ice in this case I was able to pry it out without doing those things but later on in this video you'll see that I have to use those methods to be able to defrost some of this ice now once you remove this cover you have access to the fan motor as you see now i'm releasing the harness and this is kind of tricky right here this is the harness for the fan motor and you have to pry it out you see it here in a slow motion how i did it you have to bring at least one of the wires first one by one or all of them at the same time but sometimes that little piece of bracket breaks if it breaks don't worry about it just replace the piece that broke with a piece of duct tape and secure the wires in place here is the fan motor and as you can see it's not spinning it's even making weird noises when i force it to spin because it's completely shot completely stuck and that is created by the humidity inside the refrigerator now we disconnect this panel that other harness that you saw there it's a fan motor as well for the drawer this is the part number you can get this part in the description of this video there will be a link right there just go to the description and click on the link to be able to get a new part now this is the new fan motor as you can see how it spins and freely and the old one is completely stuck now we're going to put them side by side in the same pattern and now we're going to go ahead and remove this piece of rubber because it doesn't come on the new one so once we remove it from the other one just go ahead and put it on the new one just keep in mind put them in the same spot because it can get um, tricky to put it in the other one if you don't remember how it goes or take pictures before you remove the piece of rubber just go ahead and make sure it fits right and now we're going to go ahead and put it where it goes as you see that's how it goes but i'm going to go ahead and put it out because i want you guys to see that it is working when i plugged it in and as you can see right there as soon as i plug it in it starts working the way it's supposed to 
Now, a lot of places where you buy, when you uh, buy this fan, it will tell you you need another piece to be able. Um, I was pointing out right there that the air is supposed to be blowing up, just to keep that in mind. So, as I was saying before, it's going to tell you that you need another piece to update the computer, but I found uh, sometimes you don't have to do that. And they just told you that to be able to sell you that other piece that's supposed to update the software of the com uh, computer. But, uh, you know, I done it a couple of times, but I realized it doesn't make any difference, to be honest with you. However, if you want to do it right, go ahead and buy the other piece as well. And I believe it's about $80. But if you want to uh, save that kind of money, go ahead and just replace the fan. And as you see, I have to use a screwdriver to open that little bracket to be able to fit the wiring back in place. Now, as you see right there, has another slack right there where the cable is connected. Now, because the fan wasn't working, all this bottom part got frost over, clogged the drain line, and all the water that's supposed to be going to the compressor and the evaporator that is will be observed, absorbed by the... Um, by the heat of the compressor and the condenser, I meant, um, it got stuck in here and it creates a big block of ice. So even if you replace the fan motor, if the drain hole right there is blocked with ice, it will not work properly. You will still get frost over. And as you can see right there is the hole for the drain line and it's completely full of ice. It's covering ice. So at this point, I thought it was gonna be a good idea to just boil in some water. That's one. Uh, the things that you can try if you don't have a steamer or hair dryer. A lot of people use hair dryers. I don't recommend it. That's a closer, uh, closest footage right there of the ice. Um, as I was saying before, um, a lot of people use hair dryers, but I don't recommend it because it can damage the cabinet of the refrigerator. Now, this is the way I use the steamer. First of all, I start melting all the visible ice, and then I stick the nose of the steamer inside the hole into and melt all the ice inside the hole as well. While you do that, if you see any ice around it, you can also um, go ahead and melt all the ice around it because the ice can block the drain line afterwards as well. So make sure everything is defrost when you do this repair remember to disconnect the refrigerator as well i leave it on the, in this occasion because of um, for the purpose of this video now you can use a plunger which is a turkey base you can use this turkey base as a plunger to be able to uh, clear the drain line as well but remember it have to be like hot water involved in this occasion because if you keep pump plunging just cold water the ice is not gonna melt uh, if the drain line is clogged by ice if you keep throwing cold water is you're not gonna move forward so you need a steamer hair dryer or hot water to be able to clean that drain line now if none of that works and you spend more than 30 minutes trying to unclog it the way I showed you before go ahead and go to the back of the refrigerator remove the back panel by the compressor and you will see one or two of these drain lines one will be for the um evaporator on the refrigerator and the other one the evaporator for the freezer drain line so go ahead and remove those drain lines and make sure they are clean sometimes you will find rust food pieces of styrofoam or pieces of, of bags like plastic bags and stuff um, also, if these are cracked or toasted, you can go ahead and replace it. It will look something like this, as you saw in that footage right there. So this is a little bit of information in how those drain lines will look if you're trying to buy them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description of this video for the one, the one for this model. But at this video, the, this footage that you are seeing right now, there is from another repair where I have to go in the back and make sure this drain line was clean. This is from a Samsung model, but they're all similar or the same in the back. So just keep that in mind. If you can clean them and they're not toasted or anything like that or cracked or broken, you can go ahead and clean them with soap the way you see that I'm doing it uh, in this footage. Just put some soap inside, 
with some water whatever it's in there it will get clean when you put the soap or use like a toothbrush or anything that it can help you to clear all the gunk uh, or anything that it could be clogging the pass through off the drain water that is coming from the uh, evaporators now if like I said if whatever you did inside didn't work uh, go ahead and check this drain line if you check this drain lines and they clean or you clean them up and the water still not draining keep putting the steamer or keep using the hair dryer or put hot water into is clean uh, the best thing to do for homeowners they are doing this repair themselves is if you can go ahead and clear the refrigerator let's say you have a spare refrigerator uh, go ahead and put everything in another refrigerator and let the refrigerator thaw out for 24 hours with the door open or 48 hours between 24 and 48 hours um, as you see right there I put the drains tubes back in place and like I said in this repair we didn't have to do all that but I just want to put those footage right there just in case you run in that situation because sometimes I had a couple um, repairs where this drain line would not get unclogged so I have to go in the back and perform the other steps now you see it's clean now i'm putting some hot water and it's going down the way it's supposed to and if it's not just keep adding you know water hot water and that should clean everything right now and this one is all good uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean a little bit of all this gunk that is around it because of the repair and all the water that was sitting and leaking from the uh, evaporator to this part of the uh, bottom drawer so just go ahead and try to clean up and then we're going to go ahead and start putting everything back together this is the cover for the evaporator and like i was saying before this is the harness for another little fan that is the one has a damper that throws air to that bottom drawer that we remove at the beginning of the video the bottom drawer i believe is for vegetables and that vent is the vent is the one who controls the temperature for that bottom drawer the bottom drawer has his own control uh for temperature and like i said the vent is the one who is connected to that board and that the vent the board is telling the uh vent when to open and close for temperature now we're installing the one quarter screws for this evaporator panel and i'm using my drill but if you don't have enough uh knowledge on how to use the drill i prefer for you to use a one quarter screw uh screwdriver because that drill can damage if you don't know how to use the drill you can damage the uh, the cover and break it now as you see right there there's a male to female connection in the back and one quarter screws on the front that is securing everything now over here i'm going to give you a little bit of explanation in how this drawer works because you might have a hard time trying to put it in place so i'm going to give you a little demonstration in how it's supposed to go once this bracket that you see on my right on my uh, left hand works that's how it looks when it's in place you have to go in that um, hook right there i got it in slow motion as you see i have to go on the hook and then it will go up to secure the drawer in place that way when you pull it out it doesn't fall on the floor now we're gonna go ahead and put the one quarter screws and we're gonna do the other side as well now we put in the drawer back in place and back in the day i used to put the panels on top first but in this i realized that it's better this way that's what i that's exactly what i'm doing what i'll show you in that little footage on top as you see now we put in the top covers and this is the covers that i used to put in then the bottom drawer afterwards but this way is fast and better now this is the control for the bottom drawer 
you just plugged in the harness, fit the wire back in place, like so, and go ahead and install the two one quarter screws to secure these two top panels in place. Now you gotta realize that if you got the refrigerator plugged in, which I don't recommend that, the light will go off after about 15, 20 minutes. Just to give that in mind, if you wanna turn the lights back on, go ahead and close the door and open it back in. Now install the cap for the wiring. And I know what you're gonna say, that you don't see the cap in the back, but I did put it on as you see in the small footage on the side. I just forgot to do it right then in the footage, but then I went back and removed the drawer and put it back on. I know you guys sometimes uh, notice those kind of things, but I just wanna make sure I tell you that everything was done correctly. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.